anymore. So in prayer, just speak the, the, the way you normally talk to, to one another. On a scale out of 1 to 10, how many people would say to me, on, on, from the bottom end to the top end, how, how would you rate the time that you spent with God in prayer this week? How, how many people would say, I need to pray more? Come on. Okay, okay. So, you know, I love the Psalms when Psalm 5 says this, Lord, hear my sigh, okay? <laughs> hear my cry. Every morning, hear my voice. And I lay my request before you and I wait in expectation. Yeah. That's simple, isn't it? Yeah. That's just simple. It's, we can all do it. Hear, hear my sigh. This is my burden and I wait in expectation. I was reading the Bible this week and I noticed that some of the disciples really struggled in their own prayer life, if at all. And that they were feeble in their prayer and, and they were infrequent, just as some of you put your hand up. Some of them were infrequent. And so what happened was the disciples gave up and they said, Jesus, can you tell us how should we pray? And, and he says something like this. He says, when you pray, pray like this. And so we're going to look at it. If you've got your Bible this morning, Matthew chapter 6. Okay? Matthew 6, 5 to 15. I'm encouraged by that. I'm encouraged by the fact that the disciples were taught by Jesus and he encouraged them how to pray. Okay? Because I believe that this week it's okay to grow in this area and to be encouraged in this area to pray. Every one can get involved in prayer. Okay? Is that alright? Even if your prayer is one word, help. Okay? That's okay. We can all pray. And so I think Jesus anticipated the disciples' struggle in this area. So he helped them. That's good news for us. Okay? And so we can be encouraged in our own prayer life. And so when he says this in Matthew 6, 6 to, 5, 6 to 15, I'll read a few verses. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners. Now, we don't see any of that happening today, okay? Okay. And in the synagogues where everyone can see them. But I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. Here we go. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door, go to the grotto at Hope Church, okay, and pray to your Father in private, then your Father who sees everything will reward you. Everyone say reward. reward. Okay? There's a reward in prayer. Something happens, okay? So when you pray, don't babble on as do the Gentiles. They think their prayers, I think that's the next screen. Can we have the next one? Thank you. So they think their prayers are answered merely by repeating the word again and again. Don't be like that. For your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask. And then he says this pray like this. Okay? He said, and the scripture does say like, not exactly. Do you understand that? So it's not a matter, matter of memorising the Lord's Prayer. It's a model. That's, that's what it is. And so um, we can we can pour it apart. And that's what I want to do. To pray like this. A Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. And may your will on earth be done as it is in heaven. And give us today the food we need and coffee. And forgive us our sins. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's the expense. I'm thinking of coffee already. Okay. And, and as we have forgiven those who sin against us, and don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Yeah. Just a few thoughts this morning. Is that okay? Yeah. And, um, and the first thing when we look at these scriptures, and I really want this to be the theme of our week this week. Number one, when we pray, it's from your heart. Everyone say, from your heart. Yeah. Okay. And, that, and especially there's one thing I think that keeps us, it holds us back from praying in public. You're fearful of using the wrong words. That, that's really the thing that holds everyone back. What if I say the wrong thing? And I want to say to you this morning, don't 
worry about it. Okay? It's from the heart. The heart is the most important thing. I believe God is less concerned about the words you use. He's more concerned about what's sitting on your heart. Okay? And so we can mess it up. But it's the heart that God is concerned with. And and we see that in verses 5 and 6. And uh, first of all, in Matthew 6, verses 5 to 6, he actually condemns uh, hypocrisy. What is that? These guys were standing on the street corners looking good, trying to pretend that they're looking good and praying loud so everyone would come up and go, oh, 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 what a good prayer. Oh, you're so good. He called that hypocrisy. Yeah. Okay? Now, he's not against public prayer. He's against people doing it for a show. Yeah. Okay? And uh, he says, you stand and you pray in the synagogue and the street corner. Okay? So he supports public prayer, and um, but he's he's saying, what's your motive? Okay, what's your motive? Because these people love to pray publicly, and they wanted to be seen by others. And he says it's the wrong attitude to have. It's got to come from the heart, the motive, and um, the the desire to be well thought of. Prayer is not about that at all. Prayer comes from the heart. Everyone say the heart. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So here's my point. I think many of us, sometimes this week and when you come along, sometimes we don't pray for the very same reason in public. And that reason is we care too much what other people will think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you're, pretty, you're thinking, oh, what's they going to think if I say something? Well, I suggest to you, that's the exact problem that these guys have. They cared about what people thought of them, okay? So don't care about that. Don't worry about other people's views, okay? Because our heart is not right if we start to do that. And secondly, he encourages to pray from the heart and he condemned Gentiles for heaping verses on top of prayers on top of prayers. Okay? In other words, if you just spew a lot, <laughs> he's not interested. So it's not a matter of praying long prayers. Everyone look at me for a moment. It's not a matter of, I've got to think of a really long prayer to be spiritual. No. You don't have to pile. You just get it from the heart and express what you want to say. It can be short. It can be long. Is that good? Okay. Okay. So, now, long prayers aren't bad. Nothing wrong with long prayers. It's just piling words upon words that he, he, is, he is against. And in fact, in Matthew 14 and Matthew 16, some of the longest prayers are in the Bible by Jesus himself. Yeah. Okay? He's not against long. He's against piling words up, trying to say the right words. You hear me this morning? So this week, it's not a matter of getting the right combination of words when you're praying. Pray from the heart. Very good. Okay? Pray from the heart. God, help us. That's a good prayer. (laughs) Two words. Help us. Lord, give us a breakthrough. Whatever. whatever. And you don't have to use spiritual words. It's from the heart. Everyone say, from the heart. From the heart. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to be a great prayer this week. (laughs) (laughs) So how do I engage my heart in prayer? How do I do that? How do I engage my heart? Well, we need to prepare ourselves, spend time thinking about what we're doing. And that will that'll help us to avoid babbling and carrying on. So in other words, write some stuff down. And you did that on your prayer request today. But in prayer, if you're going to pray publicly, just write some things down and say, God, these are the things I want to pray about. Prayer is not just a way of drawing a blessing from God. Prayer draws us to God. It's about communion more so than what we receive from God. It's a blessing to receive something from God, but prayer takes you into a relationship with Him. Is that okay? Okay, number two. So number one is with all of our hearts. Number two is with all of our minds. And um, Jesus doesn't want us to have uh, prayers that are filled with mindless dribble. Everyone say mindless dribble. 
Okay. So he says this, pray like this. So he gives a word, he gives us a concept. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. Notice the structure. Okay. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today food we need. Forgive us of our sins. And as we forgive those who sin against us, and may we not yield to temptation and rescue us from it. So there's a structure there. That's a, that's a, we're thinking through about what we're praying. And there's certain things and there's a certain order. I engage my mind, but it flows from my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I need to have a, a, a thing, a few things that I'm going to be praying about. So, Nothing wrong with thinking about, Lord, what's my career path? How can I contribute to the church? What's my skill? How can I bless someone? What words of encouragement can I have this week? You can write down all sorts of things that you can include in your prayer. Okay? But you have a particular structure that you can follow. Can I encourage you? There are, I, I have a method called push and axe. When I use the word push, push until something happens, P-U-S-H. That's the way I pray sometimes. But most of all, I, the method I use is ACTS, A-C-T-S. I start with adoration. Now, many of us will jump straight to S, which is, God, help, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I need a breakthrough, the car broke down, I don't need money, okay? But A is adoration, and I spend time in adoration. God, you're wonderful, yeah. you're majestic. You're holy. You are, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of the universe. Adoration. We start with adoration. Blessed be the name of the Lord my God. And then we can go to C, which is confession. Where God, forgive me of my sin, the things that I thought about, Ken, the things I spoke about in my mind about Ken and all the evil things I feel about Ken, which is zero... <laughs> You don't know where to look. Okay. And so we can confess our sin. Lord, I cut off that New South Wales driver at the, you know. How many people have got something to confess? Yeah. Oh, look, look, just keep, look, look. These are the honest people. If they hands up, the rest are saints. Okay. So, uh, so A, C. T is thanksgiving. God, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. And thank you for the good things you've got in store for me. Thank you for the fact that I've got a house where I can eat food. And then finally, I finish up with S, which is supplication. That's very different, isn't it? Supplication is God help me. I need a breakthrough in my personal life. You, you with me this morning? Yeah. That is quite different than saying, God, I need a breakthrough in my life. You start in worship and adoration. That's what we read here. Our Father who is in heaven, you know, our Heavenly Father, may your kingdom come. See, there's that focus of, of Him first. Okay. It's quite interesting in prayer, there is an order. There's a story in Genesis chapter 18, a very powerful story, of where three people approached Abraham. And he saw these three strangers. He didn't know who these three people were. But obviously the Bible indicates that one appears to be Jesus... In, in the form of a human, God-like, but he looked like a human and wasn't quite sure. And the other two were angels, and there's a debate over that. But Abraham was, was watching these three people approach, and he welcomed them, and he says, please, be my be, visit with us. Come on, can I give you some food? He goes into the tent, he tells his wife to prepare some food, and they get, they get an animal, they slaughter this animal, they have a meal together, and... Abraham says, well, where are you, uh, what, what's, where are you going? And they, they say in Genesis 18, we are going down to Sodom and Gomorrah to verify what we have heard, the level of evil that's in the country. Now here's Abraham's uh, cousin, cousin or nephew, which, are, which are, his nephew is down there. And what he does, he starts praying. He, he, he does what we do which is in a session. He says, um, uh, Lord, um, if there's 50 righteous people down there, would you stop um, your judgment? And, and he says, yes, if there's 50 people, we'll stop. 
If there's 30 people, yes, we won't go to... If there's 20, 10, and it goes down to... There's no one. No one. But this is a very powerful intercession. Yeah. It's an example of a prayer where we pray for a city or a nation. Yeah. For God's blessing, God will withhold judgment for one 